What's up, Warrior Rising Tribe? This is Alyssa, and I'm back with another incredible veteran who competed in Detroit. Warrior Rising is the premier place to be for veteran entrepreneurship, and I'm so excited to talk to Amit. He competed in Detroit, like I had said, and he has some key takeaways and some awesome things to get into. So without spoiling what he has to say and putting words in his mouth, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for um, having uh, me here. It was an awesome experience. I can't wait to uh, talk to you guys and share my experiences about what we did in Detroit. So it's yeah. a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. I'm excited. We got to connect after the whole thing was over too. And I remember just that resounding, like, you know, there was synergy, there was community. It was just a really awesome last evening for everybody. So kind of first, just tell everyone what your business is, and then we'll kind of get into the everything else. That way they know. That, that's fair. We can get carried yeah. away otherwise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, I uh, founded a business called Share On. It's, um, it rose from my need. I think that I feel uh, there's insufficient information on how well people connect. And I think there's always improve, room to improve, uh, to grow in how you connect professionally and socially. <gasps> And so, uh, <laughs> so sorry about my dog. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, there's always room to improve and grow. And so uh, my team and I, we developed a mobile app that would allow people to get feedback from their peers. Uh, so, it, you know, it, you, you leverage your network, your peers and your professional acquaintances to kind of get that feedback. It's anonymous on the platform. And we like mitigate some of the harms that arise that can potentially arise from uh, anonymous feedback. So. In the long term, we see it going, um, I mean, it arose from the idea of solving a personal problem, but we think there's a direction to solve kind of business-related problems on the HR front. Yeah, I love to see that. And the pitch competition is one of my absolute favorite parts to watch. Um, first of all, it's inspiring. And it's always such a diverse group of people, right? It's like these businesses are not in the same industries usually. No. So it's very interesting to see like all these different ideas and how like, you, you know, it's just so different. And it's a different community that you get to walk away with too. But going to Detroit, like what was your key takeaway or what's like a moment that really stood out to you? Oh man, I was so, honestly, I was really overwhelmed just with how, like, it's weird. So I, I like, I was overwhelmed with the sense of how well we all connected. It was a lot of like motivating, a lot of emotionally um, overwhelming moments just because uh, the speakers were all great. The camaraderie was really high. Uh, my peers were awesome. There wasn't a sense that we were competing against each other. And, you know, in the startup world, we're not really competing because a, a lot of us have different uh, businesses and stuff like that. But, you know, in this competition, we're competing for a chance to present our ideas, uh, a chance for like monetary gain and stuff like that. But there wasn't that sense of like we're against each other in any way. And I got a lot of actually excellent uh, feedback from my uh, my, my other peers and help to like future help um and so we stayed in contact pardon we stayed in contact you know I, I look forward to kind of seeing how they progress and honestly compared to like some of the peers i just felt that i i had more to learn because a lot of them had made such great progress that there's more room for me to develop so in a sense that because I had so much further to go and because I had so many people that were further along than me, there's a lot more for me to learn through the process. So I was kind of just trying to be a sponge absorbing what I was learning, even though even though the business backgrounds were different, we all kind of learn in a general business sense from each other. So yeah, I love to hear that that community is so important. And that's usually one of the takeaways that everyone brings is, you know, you still have these people that you might even still be communicating with someone you met from there or a few people. Yeah. So I really love to see that that happen. Um, yeah, so with Warrior Rising, how did you even hear about us? And what made you just decide to get involved with the pitch competition? Yeah, I um I had been looking for non-dilutive funding, obviously. I think a lot of startups yeah. are. I wanted to leverage the le veteran background. I kind of, you know, I think when you leave the military, you know, especially because a lot of us go through this sense of detachment. And so I'd done the corporate thing for a little while. And I yeah. just wanted um, a sense to be a part of the community again because I, I was, I've been looking for that basically and so it's a combination of the funding and the community and a way to like improve my pitch was just any opportunity to you know improve what I'm doing uh, is something that I was looking forward to so I, I found Worry Rising just like um, you know like looking up non-dilutive funding and you know it was, it was a great experience I guess is there more to your question I'm sorry no that was it you did good okay, yeah that's great 
<laughs> no, it's good insight too, because it helps like, you know, build that brand awareness again, because we're more, you know, and we, we, t- we say this, Jason says it a lot too, the founder um, about it's not giving the veteran a fish. It's like, you literally have to work to earn or, and I mean, even if you don't win, let's say the grant, you still walk away with a network, with a community. We don't disappear afterwards. You know, like I want to be able to help everyone on the staff wants to be able to help or the mentors, coaches, things like that. So I like when people can hit on that too. Yeah. Like, so, and you know, like, um, so I talked to, you know, I still talk to, um, Chris McLean. I talked talk to a few of the guys still. I, you know, Chris had just done, you know, some recent work, uh, trying to pitch his business to Walmart. And so it's like, good to yep. hear kind of follow up and see what they're all doing. And then also, you know, I'm doing kind of the AI space. We had two other businesses do in that space that were more far along than me. And so I've been kind of picking their brain. I actually got the pitch. So I loved in particular, cause I was, I'm doing the AI space, you know, yeah. like a SaaS business. I particularly loved one of the PO groups, um, pitches, their pitch deck. And so I reached out to the, to the, um, to the founder, um, it was, a uh, Tim and, uh, and, uh, McLean. And they reached out. Honestly, I emailed Sim and in five minutes. He sent me his pitch deck. And so now I'm using that to improve my deck. Uh, yeah, so it's oh, that's awesome. Been awesome. That's really cool. So how do you stay motivated? What is your inspiration for waking up and showing up? Because that is like one of the hardest things, especially as a veteran, right? You take your uniform off and there's that, you know, that period of time where you need to redefine who you are beyond that. So what keeps you inspired? I don't, I don't look at this as, I, I think it's important not to look at this as too different than service from in the yeah. military. Mm-hmm. I got out of the military, really wanted to find a way to serve again, uh, yeah. because I knew that, I knew that I wouldn't be happy in life just having a job. And so I was looking for that. Yeah. As far as motivation, in some ways, in the military for me, the thing that drove me was the fear of letting down my peers and mm-hmm. the guys I worked with. And so the thing that drove me was my motivation to work for those guys. My fear now is I think I can solve a big problem. And, you know, we've touched on the, like the surface of it, but I think I can solve a big problem. And my fear is like failure of, you know, what will arrive. That problem won't be solved. It'll, it'll continue to exist if I don't do this. And so um, that's kind of my fear, I guess. That's, it's weird for fear to drive kind of like the fear of failure or the fear of not achieving or solving yeah. problems. But that's kind of what motivates me to keep pushing. And so and now that I have a team, you know, I have people on my team who who are putting in a lot of work and they're, you know, they're hoping to get something out of this. And so now I get to work for someone else and it becomes easier when more people start to invest their time into you. Definitely. And I love that you touched on uh, wanting to continue to serve after serving. That's something that I've noticed with a lot of veteran companies is there's some element of service that still exists because it's something that's really important to to each of us. So I love that you said that, and I love that you that's a part of your values um, structure for your business as well. For other veterans who are looking to start their entrepreneurship journey, or maybe they are too afraid, right? Fear has fear has got a hold of them. What's your piece of advice or pieces that you would want to share with them? You know, it's it's tough. Uh, I think Nick, so the the keynote speaker you guys had in Detroit, yeah, uh, he talked about. Uh, you know, planting your flag in the future, making it known that's your target and to like shed the fears you have today to achieve that goal wholeheartedly. Uh, that really resonated with me. And so you, when you have reservations within reason, you know, when you have these reservations, when you have these like turn off points, you're less likely to achieve your goals. And there, it's reasonable to have some level of fear. I think you know, I, I wish I could put it as well as he did, but yeah. planting that flag really makes it more likely that you'll achieve your goals and, and being comfortable. And we've, to be fair, like we're all fairly comfortable with risk, you know, no one joins the military thinking like this is the, mm-hmm. you know, this is going to be financially beneficial. That's not yeah. why you join, right? Um, you don't join because you're looking to advance your own life in some way. Um, yeah. And so as far as like risk, I think that it's natural for us to be okay with a little bit of risk. Uh, what I would encourage people to do is to reach out to the com- like the network we have and then to use the people we, you know, in our community, because whatever I've done, whether it's been work or school or, or this, uh, the vet community has been like right on my back, just helping push me along. And so it's been important for my own success. Yeah. So. Awesome. 
What has been like the most rewarding part of your business startup or a success story, something like that? The most rewarding part is, man, that's a good question. <laughs> I think, I think the, um, man, I, I hope that there's more right now because we don't have like a, a lot of market validity. Uh, we don't get to hear success stories yet. And, yeah. um, you know, we hope to get those in the future. Right now, it's all internal. So I get to, I get a little, we talked earlier, right? I get a little bit of that capture of like having the team again. You know, a, um, our success stories are kind of more internal, just like uh, little wins, like, you know, getting our pitch deck cleaned up, getting our uh, financial yeah. projections uh, done, working as a team. Actually, even just to, man, the, actually, I know my biggest, my okay. business's <laughs> biggest success actually up to this point has just been convincing a team to come on board of a pitch. I'm not paying these people to do this, yeah. you know, like this work, just like convincing other people that, you know, this is an idea with pursuing was honestly, it yeah. felt like my biggest success. And then having these people to fall back on has been, um, has been rewarding for me. So yeah, I, I awesome. love this. Yeah, that, that's great. And like, when you love what you do, it reflects in, in the business itself and across that team that believe in you. Yeah. It's good to have that belief. It matters. <laughs> like your circle matters, yeah. people. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So if you could, now this is a fun question. If your business could have any one particular superpower, what would it be? Any superpower? Any, any superpower. Yeah. I think the, the one thing we're lacking, well, the one thing we hope to test and, and understand right now is um, engagement where we want to solve the problem. We think we can solve the problem with the data, but the biggest gap, the biggest hurdle that we have to cross is to get engagement we have to provide utility to individuals so that, you know, that we can solve this larger problem. We have to make sure that those people get something out of this incrementally. And so if we could do anything, I think we can do the bigger thing, but if we could do anything well, it's just like to offer something useful to like a really, really broad audience. Because for us, the broader that audience is, the larger our impact is. Because, you know, when we, when, you know, we've talked about, I, I talk a little bit about, about what the business does. It's feedback, right? Yep. But if I can take the way people interact on individual um, interactions, I can characterize, you know, what communities look like, you know, like where, um, you know, where are their problems within communities? Where are their problems within business? And so that, that the wider the scope of uh, in, engagement, the bigger that impact is for us. So that's kind yeah. of what we would wish for. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, and as far as like bringing it back to Warrior Rising in the community, what part of the culture resonates with you the most or resonated with you the most? Yeah. So, man, my time at Warrior Rising was awesome. And I, I really can't <laughs> undersell it. Sorry, oversell it enough. Like I, I've i been in uh, the startup community only for like a, about a year now, but I've been really engaged. Uh, I'm in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, There's a pretty good startup community here. People are like invested in each other. Um, I think the startup community inherently builds, brings people along who are, you know, collaborative. Even even within that context, all these startup cohorts or whatever you're talking about, they all hope to achieve some level of camaraderie, and that that's kind of the goal. And we they all talk about it, they all pitch, but Warrior Rising actually executes on it. And it was uh, the thing; it was shocking to me because it was so low effort. It was so just. I don't, not in your part. It's probably a lot of effort on your guys' part. But on our end, it was just so effortless. Uh, the the uh, way we all interacted was so effortless. Um, and so that is the thing that sticks out the most, I think. But, you know, it's a combination of the startup community and the veteran community. I think it's kind of inherent, um, especially with the people who tend to stay interacting in the veteran community. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love to hear that. Um, the community is everything. And we kind of touched on that earlier too. It's we're we're still going to be here. Like once you're a part of the tribe, like you're you're a part of it. You know, like we're not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, you have a you have a tough time getting rid of me at this point. You yeah, guys, honestly, like... the staff is amazing. Like Reggie, Preston, like all Jason. Yeah. I got a chance to talk to Jason. It was yeah. cool. Like the amount of help that they offered, yeah. the mentorship, it was it was unbelievable. Um, and so I, yeah. you know, I didn't win, uh, but I, I don't feel in any way like a loser. This okay. experience has been amazing for me. I'm so glad to see yeah. that people are doing what you guys are doing. So I hope to get more people involved with this type of organization because the bigger this, these types of organizations grows, the big, more we can help, uh, you know, our community. And so I think that's important. 
No, it absolutely is. I couldn't agree more. That's an awesome point. And we appreciate any awareness. It, like you will have to work for it. So if you're listening to this, you do have to work for it. But it's incredibly rewarding in so many different kinds of ways, even for the staff. I mean, I absolutely love what I do with Warrior Rising and being able to give back in some way to the veteran community. It's like being a part of that again. It's like, okay, the, com the camaraderie, like you said, that is such a massive piece. Like being with like-minded people that want to be better and see other people, like our people, you know, do good things. It, so I will say yeah. there's, so the one thing, and you know, I, I know um, just limited time, but no, the one good. thing in the veteran community is that like, you know, and this is true, even like when you're going through a hiring process and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you feel like when you're talking to someone that works at a company, that they'll give you the unfiltered answers to everything, like the things that, you know, the ways you can improve, um, you know, like how you can position yourself to better succeed. You you don't feel like people are going to put on a show or like give you something that's fault, like wrong. And yeah. so this, this organization does that, but for the startup community, like they're going to give me the things not just the tools but the feedback i need to improve my product because i don't want to be you know like it's it's hard to that's what the feedback platform is about it's, yeah. it's hard to really understand how well you're doing unless people give you real honest guidance on um, how you can improve and, and warrior rising does that so yeah, yeah well, we appreciate hearing that yeah no likewise it's uh it's a two-way street so i'm glad we can meet in the middle you know so which is awesome but what other things happened in Detroit that you want to share? Was there a funny moment? Did someone trip? Is there something that we don't uh, know about that we man, should know about? Was so, I don't, um, I think, okay, so uh, there's one thing that comes to mind um, above all else, but it is kind of like more niche. So, so during the war, you were, it was a long weekend. We did yeah. a lot and they had a lot yeah. planned. So the, we did the uh, GM Proving Grounds, yeah, uh, which was aw was an awesome experience. It was uh, through GM's, uh, it was defense, their defense, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, their defense sector. And so, you know, those guys put on like a really amazing um, event for us. Uh, you had the speaker, Earl Plumley came talk to us, amazing event. Um, and yeah. really motivational, but the funny thing, uh, so we were doing the, they had us, they actually took us out off-roading. So we did uh, military yeah. vehicles. Uh, they took us off-roading and I was facing, I was back there with some of the sponsors. We're all sitting in the back of this, um, truck or this, like, I don't even know what it's called, but it was like, it was like, I'm facing yeah. like literally the back. We got, got a guy in front of me facing the left and he's getting just like just like wrecked with mud in front of me <laughs> I, I was, and then and then we were like those by the way those drivers are crazy because like i'm facing backwards and we're taking hills going down like just like i swear to god those angles like 75 degree drop and i'm just like not seeing anything just like holding on diving backwards <laughs> it was um yeah i felt bad that for the guy awesome. in front of me luckily he like didn't dress too nicely so when he's you know yeah. like, his leg was all covered in mud he was all good uh, it was great That's yeah fun. we had kind of like our evenings were kind of fun too because we kind of chop it yeah. up after all the events and uh you know hit the bar and just hang out just, those yeah. are kind of i don't know private and fun those are yeah uh, yeah good events yeah no the gm uh event was a huge hit across the veterans i'm they couldn't fit everyone so i couldn't be there but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm vicariously living through it because I heard the same thing where they're like, I didn't think I was going to be in the seat much longer. Like, they're like, you know, how did, did they test they had, this, this many people before? <laughs> and they had that, they had a, a EV Hummer or something. That thing went zero to 60, like three or something like seconds. It was that something that huge that moved that fast is the first time I'd ever done anything like it. So it was, it was a crazy experience. I had no expectation uh, going in. And so I was like mind blown. This is awesome. Yeah, that is great. I felt kind of to... spoiled. I felt a little yeah. spoiled, to be honest. That's cool, though, to start, like, you know, to kind of kickstart the adrenaline before the big day. It's like, you know. Y'all y'all had me worn out for three days. Seriously. Yeah. I was just like, it was an emotional roller coaster is what it was. Um, yeah. It was awesome. I loved it. Yeah, well. I appreciate you hopping on. So if you want to share with everyone where they can find you, support you, whatever, connect with you, if they have an idea, please let us know. Sure. Yeah. So um, again, my name's Amit Parmar. The business is ShareOn, S-H-A-R-E-O-N. Uh, we're, we're a mobile app. So we plan to be on Google Play and the Apple App Store soon. Uh, but we also have a website, dshareon.com. Uh, it's our little landing page and it'll help direct you as necessary so i really appreciate this i appreciate warrior rising yeah. i appreciate 
also I appreciate it. Um, Alyssa did a lot of the motivational stuff, a lot of centering exercises uh, while we were doing our training. And so I really appreciate that as well. So it was, it was helpful. Oh, I'm glad you remember. I, yeah. yeah, I was using, I was actually just using it this week. I was, I got done with like a little pitch thing and I was like trying to like not freak out a little bit. So yeah, it's been helpful. That's awesome to hear. I'm glad. I'm glad the, you know, box breathing and all that stuff. We underrate how important breathing is when we're intentional with it. So yeah, yeah. I love to hear that. that. I know it's not the last time we'll be talking either. So I'm excited to see what you do with your business. Thank you. Thank you guys for having us. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, no, 100%. And anyone listening, Warrior Rising Again is the nonprofit that is premier space to be for veteran entrepreneurs. Please check us out at warriorrising.org or comment on any social media because we will get back to you um, with whatever questions you have or anything, really. And I manage it, so I know that for a fact. So but anyways, thank you everyone for tuning in. And Amit, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Awesome. It's a pleasure. Have a good one. Absolutely. We'll see you next time. Thank you.